All right. Hey, thanks for, for coming to listen to this. And the whole idea of, of this chat is basically that there are a few people in Finland and few companies that have gone through tr tremendous growth. And uh, my personal view is, in a way, that there's a lot to learn by startups from these companies and these people. And uh, having invested myself into about 40 companies and, and I've been building a couple of, I just always look at the wisdom. Of, is there something that we could grab? And, uh, and, and, and in startups, everybody looks at the CEO. So the founding CEO is where it all starts. He, is, he or she is typically the one who basically sets the strategy, is leading to execution, is the one cohesive force that kind of pulls people together. And uh, Jorma, is it really so that it, it all starts with the CEO? I think it is. And uh, that's, that's how our information society is working. There's a lot. Uh, Things are being personalized even more than um, I and many people w would like to be the case. So uh, the CEO uh, is looked at from outside. The CEO uh, in terms of a uh, startup internally is being looked upon um, as uh, bringing guidance and uh, sometimes even solutions. Uh, so um, uh, the CEO is in the spotlight uh, in, in a way Often, founder sets up the uh, basic idea, but uh, since uh, creating a great company uh, is uh, an emotional journey, the map has to be drawn by the CEO, and how you get there, how, do, how you build the company, is very much the CEO domain to work on. And, uh, then, um, if you look at the outside world, the financiers like yourself, you look at the CEO first. You make up the mind on what the guy, he or she, uh, is up to. Uh, and then the second question is, what about the team? But you always start with the CEO, and we will talk about the team later, um, as I think you... Yeah, that's you, right. So, it's, but, it's, but CEO is fundamentally important. Yeah, it's, it's right. I mean, some of the investors, especially the Valley investors, are even saying that they only invest in companies where you can have a founder, a CEO, who can take it from the inception until the exit and the kind of a big road, you know, hundreds of millions and billions. So um, how deeply should CEO go, in your opinion? I mean, you said that CEO needs to set the direction, set the company, create the vision, the strategy, lead the execution. How deeply you should go, and is there a line that you should not cross? Well, um, here we are. We are getting towards building a team um, yeah. already in the sense that uh, obviously the success of the company is not about a founder with a great idea yeah. and starting, and then the CEO taking on, traveling through the emotional journey and uh, getting, getting to the end result, which, which is a huge success and changing the world a bit. Uh, but um, when you look at the role of the CEO, he, he or she has to be an expert in one or two of the key areas of the company so that he can be looked upon, both from outside as well as internally, as having got it. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that does not mean that he or she has to be a master of, of all the trades, uh, so that, every, that, that he or she is the best of, uh, of, of all the areas. But I don't think uh, the CEO can run away from product creation and knowing the customer. Yeah. And those two things um, need to be always uh, at the heart of... Uh, or, uh, or at the top of the minds of the worries um, yeah. of the CEO in the different development phases. Even if you go along and, uh, and grow bigger as a company, yeah. the CEO has to cover those two areas. And the other areas, he or she needs to have yeah. a big enough knowledge so that uh, he can give guidance. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's how yeah. I roughly see it. There's, there's actually two really interesting hooks which I'm going to get back to. But, uh, I totally agree. I mean, with the startups that we have invested in and we have seen, I mean, the CEO's role in selling the first customers, basically, selling to the yeah. first customers. I mean, no one else can sell that than the founders. And, and, and then the second thing is the product creation, which is the most critical task of any startup. Exactly. And, and the best startups are typically the ones where the CEO has some take on product creation, and that always happens together with the customers. Exactly. But hey, you were saying that there's an emotional ride of being a CEO. 
and, and and having been a CEO of a, a startup myself, it's a lonely position. At least that's how I felt it somehow. And you felt Do you the, had to write a book, right? Yeah, I felt <laughs> I had to write a book. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, how do you think? Is it a lonely job? Is there kind of a moments where you need to decide and make up your mind with no external input and feeling a little bit like there could be more support around me? Uh, I, I think um, I think this um, uh, point about CEO job being a lonely one is is uh, is absolutely correct, and uh, it's my experience, and I've seen many. CEOs whom I have had a chance of mentoring um, yeah. uh, saying the same, that they never believed it would be as lonely as it is before they took it on. Yeah. Um, and um, since um, th this is the case, yeah. um, the, um, uh, s somebody taking on a CEO job, either in a startup or in a bigger uh, uh, outfit, uh, needs to think about this, um, uh, needs to make sure that um, he or she yeah. is able to grow through the tough, yeah. um, uh, tough moments and uh, take on the criticism yeah. and not to lose sleep yeah. too many times. Yeah. Uh, so, so how do how do you actually develop yourself as a CEO? I mean, it's a job that there are no schools for CEOs, right? No. And uh, and and especially, what is your advice for startup CEOs? Because sometimes we see that when a startup grows. There's no delegation. It's difficult to, you know, manage 100 people, 200 people, whereas you were good at managing 20 people or 50 people. Any advice? How how do you develop yourself oh. as a CEO? Uh, in, in that sort of a role, I, I don't think there are any courses, any schools. Uh, I don't think reading books on that uh, is, too, is, yeah. is is that much helpful. Um, what you need to have is to have. Hopefully, one or two persons who will act as a bit of mentors. I yeah. think those are extremely important. One or two confidants yeah. with whom you can share your your your, your issues. And you need um, the social uh, uh, points of contact. You you need a family to support you yeah. or a partner, um, and you need the balance uh, in your life. So you you need to do your morning run, morning swim, yeah. or keep fit. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we, we are a psychophysical yeah. physical, uh, yeah. whole um, as human beings. Yeah. So in order to grow and mature as human beings, you need to think about yourself yeah. um, much more broadly. Read a bit, yeah. but not too much, because then you become an yeah. academic. Uh, and, um, and, and, and that's a growth process. But mentors are actually used much less than they, uh, they should be or could be used. Yeah. Hey, 30-second uh, 30, 30 uh, poll. Who has been a startup CEO or a CEO? Hands up. All right, so there's quite a lot of those. So you, I, I hope that you share some of the ideas that have been presented, because it's exactly in a way, especially with startups, you are there with your own name, with your own you know, economy or money involved, with your own company, with your own idea. So it's a really big thing if it kind of goes crash, and, uh, and, and obviously you need to be ready to go at the, that stage as well. So let's switch the gears and then get a little bit more broad, so to the team. I mean, Nokia was quoted at least by the press of the dream team. And in startups, as you know, the management team qualifications, at least for me, have typically been in a way that you want to hire people who have done exactly the same job in their previous jobs so that they can just hit the ground running with their connections and capabilities and skills. So Jorma, against that, how would you build a management team from scratch? How, how do you build yeah. a great management team? Yeah, I think, the, um, um, I think the key thing to note, first of all, is that there is some academic research saying that the optimal size of a team is 4.7 persons. Yeah, which means that uh, if you have a, a group of four, four or five persons, it adds a lot to you being only one or two persons. Yeah. Uh, and that you don't add as much if you go up to 10 or so. So yeah. it becomes more difficult to be an effective team. So that's the first point. And I think in, in all the companies, there is an inofficial team of some sort, three yeah. to seven people who have the informal contacts. Any effectively managed company typically has that sort of a group. Yeah. So, so any th CEO should look at that fact, because yeah. it, it's a good empirical evidence supporting it. Second thing is, clearly, 
and I think Matti Alahuhta alluded to that already, is, is it's all about diversity. So if you, if you want yeah. to build a, a, a dream team from scratch, you, you ideally would take five very different persons. Yeah. And I'm not talking about ethnic background yeah. or gender, I'm talking yeah. about cognitive diversity. Five people or so who think very differently, yeah. but who have the same passion, will to win around the concept of yeah. the company. Yeah. Um, and then to work with the CEO and partners. So, uh, yeah. and so, so um, um, the, b because you don't want the fourth or the fifth person yeah. being very similar to the number two or three, yeah. because it's just another pair of hands very yeah, easily. Yeah, right. You want diversity so that you always, when you have a, a brief meeting, either a phone conference or a 15 minute informal uh, coffee um, canteen meeting, so um, uh, there is always a surprising angle from one of the people yeah. which you never thought as a CEO. Yeah. So, so this sort of cognitive diversity is just fundamentally important for an effective yeah. team. And I think best teams have that. So, and it's not about race or gender. And by the way, why is gender diversity important? It is because females bring a different point of view very often. So uh, it's not, yeah. in a way, it is about gender and et ethnic uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. diversity as well. But the cognitive diversity is what the psychologist yeah. would yeah. Uh, talk about. Yeah. So Jorma, how about then, uh, our, if I look at our companies, the worst hiring mistakes that they have done is that they have hired somebody from a bigger corporation into a management team role, and, and that person hasn't been able to start executing, but has been more like continuing to managing the processes type of a management style. Am I totally yeah. wrong here? You can be contradictory. Am I totally wrong yeah. or am I right? Or what's you, no. how the, can they ever, is big companies like process management and okay. small companies like execution? Yeah, you, so, so you have read some Steve Jobs views on John Scully. Uh, uh, in, no, in, I haven't actually. In, in <laughs> Apple. I also read the John Scully book yeah. because I thought that was interesting yeah. from the point of view oh, okay. of your, your question. So, so um, I, I, um, I think you have a point, yeah. uh, Timo. Um, it is not easy for somebody who has uh, uh, gone from a small company or from medium-sized company to be a CEO yeah. of a big company and then does reasonably well yeah. uh, to go into a startup, a small company, yeah. because the balance of how you need to deal with things is different. And, the, and, and, and it's not worse or better, it is yeah. different. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's all the question of uh, um, uh, com coming back to the issue of Yes, processes and systems are important yeah. for, a, for a growing company when you get into 400, 500, 1,000 people. Yeah. Uh, but a growth company cannot lose the spark and the passion which made the company great yeah. in terms of a growth company yeah. and, and prospects. Yeah. So, so you have to retain those good things that yeah. uh, made the company great while adding some systems and processes yeah. so and, you, and and that's not uh, that's that's not an easy one for somebody yeah. who is coming from a sort of a ready-made si set of systems from a big company yeah. so how do you do that actually because you know when the company is small the ceo and the management team sets the culture yeah it just forms because everybody's observing that these guys do it this way so we do it the same way exactly so when the company grows are there any rituals or activities and i just tell why i'm asking this because when our company grew to about 150 employees, we had a strategy day where I did nice slides and, and you know, this is culture and all that. And people got back to me and said that, hey, this is this big company stuff. So where is the genuity? So any <laughs> comments on that? And yeah. I can tell you that later, our company almost collapsed because lack of processes, but we survived the crisis. But okay. this makes you easier to answer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, so, so when, when you go above 100 people yeah. and, and you, you, you continue growing and you approach 300 to 400, if you don't have the processes, yeah. uh, but at the same time the balance of retaining the passion and the ways you were doing things which made you great, yeah. then you run into problems. Yeah. And Apple, uh, when they had 400 people, had a huge crisis. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. a, is a case in point. And there are so many other, other examples. 
So um, you, it's just a huge de demand for the wisdom yeah. and the skills of the CEO to set this balance yeah. right, not to start uh, uh, stuffing too much processes yeah. and systems on, yeah. on people who really are innovators, but you have to find them the right kind of role and be able to yeah. satisfy their, their needs yeah. for them to continue to yeah. perform great. Yeah. So it is. It is difficult. Uh, yeah. So so you are also in many boards. I mean, all the startups want to have a strong boards with connected people and, and all that. Yeah. And and I must say that I have, I've, I, I'm sitting right now in like tens of boards, kind of a thing. And um, only few of those are effective. And only few of those, in my opinion, are delivering value to the startup company. I mean, from a CEO's point of view, okay. if you would be a CEO and you would want to select a board. What would you do? So what type of a board would be supportive for you and the management team? Okay, so you need an adequate amount of industry knowledge. Yeah. Um, so uh, half of the board members or so, yeah. you need to have some contact yeah. on knowledge of the industry yeah. you're operating, the technology you are deploying, um, etc. But you can't have all of them. Yeah. Because otherwise they start uh, running the show and, right. and, 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 and being so, so overly smart about it. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so you also need the sort of broad wisdom yeah. um, in the HR area and other areas um, with, with, so that they can contribute. And um, it, it has to be a group which you feel, you, uh, as a CEO, you can, you, you, you can build a good partnership yeah. with yeah. Be, um, because one day when the shit hits the fan, yeah. as they say, and the rainy day comes, yeah. um, the CEO needs the board. Yeah. So you have to prepare for the day when the rainy day comes. Yeah. That's and, really good insight. And, and, and so, so that uh, there is the right kind of support. Yeah. And, hey. the, and, the, and, and you, uh, wh while at the same time yeah. you have to remember that the boards typically are uncomfortable places yeah. to sit in because you are not really sure whether you know enough yeah. or, or whether some surprise will come next week yeah. and then the board is asked, yeah. you know, where were you yeah. when this thing happened? <laughs> That's uh, right. so, so you have to, as a CEO, one has to make sure that the board is yeah. on, uh, on board, so to speak, yeah. and, and is up to speed yeah. so that they, they are ready to take the hit in a constructive yeah. way, because hits do come. Yeah. We have both seen that. Yeah, that's right. Hey, this could continue for ages, because I think there's a lot of wisdom inside. I hope you got something food for thought, because that's the most important part from this type of thing. So please, when you walk out, think about one idea that you captured from today's this fireside. And, and let's give applause to Jorma. Thank you.